Where is the translator? Jangir? It's going to be in English. Ah, uh -huh, right. They're all English speaking? Yes. People? Very good. It's to save time as well. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. MashaAllah. So everything is ready for question and answer? Please. Ajay, you can help me with references in case. Please. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The first question is from Mr. John Cooper, who is a Christian. Mr. John Cooper. From Mauritius? No, he's a guest of a Mauritius. Across the road. Very fine. I'm from across the road. Right, okay. <laughs> we have so many I was given to understand that this meeting is with Mauritians. Is it right? Yes. We have many honorary Mauritians so today. There are people, Mauritius people, or Mauritian people living across the road? <laughs> <laughs> please, please. Your question. That's right. Mr. Cooper says, I, as a keen gardener myself, I am interested in the development of improved species of plants. We now have the prospect of genetic engineering of plants and seeds. Does Hazur have a view as to whether this represents an interference with the natural world in which we live? It may interfere, but not necessarily. As far as the improvement of the characters which have been created by God is concerned, that can take place in two ways. Number one, artificially producing some qualities by crossbreeding, genetic crossbreeding. The effect of which is not fully known. And uh, the genetic engineering presents a grave danger in that area. Because apparently in the first generation you see the difference which is required. But what will happen to the next generation and the next are unknown quantities and unknown qualities. So I think this may eventually result in very grave consequences. But overall, to improve the quality of a plant in which genetic changes are not controlled, that is, of course, a human exercise which we observe from thousands of years past. And with the passage of time, by cross-breeding, you can achieve such qualities which were not known beforehand. And I approve of that fully because the human experience of the last many thousands of years has uh, put its stamp onto validity and the goodness of this uh, attempt. So, this is my advice to you as well. <laughs> Thank you. The next question is from Mr. Robert Turnbull, who is British but married to a, a Mauritian Ahmadi lady. He asks a long question. Mm. The Bible statement that man is created in God's image is probably the source of the Western idea of God as a kindly old man wandering the universe. The Quran states that man was formed from clay into which God's spirit was breathed. Could Hazur please comment on the attributes of God as you may consider mankind to reflect and those which we should aspire to? First of all, I very much regret to say that the Western understanding, if it is the Western understanding, which I doubt, it could be the understanding of a few people, but not, could not be dubbed as Western understanding. That is not correct. The understanding which he gave me as the Western understanding, based on scriptures, is not correct. That means somebody has miserably, miserably failed to understand the scriptures. When Jesus Christ said man is made in the image of God, what is the image of God? The image of God is not physical, it's not material. So those qualities of God, which are his attributes, 
is only referring to such qualities. And the attributes of God, as we know, are understood to be good all over the world. Any attribute which you may call divine has a quality of dignity about it. So such is the expect expectation of Jesus Christ, of his followers, that you should represent God. People should see the face of God in your face, in your behavior. That is what he meant. And this exactly is the verdict of the Quran. There is not the slightest difference between the two in this regard. Thank you. The next questioner is Jahangir Haq Khan, who is an Ahmadi. Oh, right. Another Jahangir Khan. <laughs> when you said Jahangir Khan, this Jahangir Khan said, no, no, this is not my question. <laughs> Please, it's yours. Huh? Many a scientist has discovered rules, laws, and equations that describe the behavior of natural processes. For example, the laws of physics. When Allah created the universe, did he design these rules as we have discovered? What me mechanism was used from your understanding? I think he's quite right that even before the creation, the blueprint was ready because every wise creator has a blueprint on his table of whatever he is going to create and if he is really wise then the blueprint should take care of every future development which is uh, which has not yet taken place so similarly I believe and I think uh, there is no gain saying this that God in his wisdom has a blueprint of all the creation. The difference is that the human engineer misses a few things here and there because he cannot uh, fully realize what may happen in the future not only with regards to his design whether he will be able to complete the design to perfection or not or whether design is completed to perfection or not but also he does not know the other interfering agents which may occur in future from an area of which he has no knowledge but God is perfect in the sense that his blueprint has to be perfect as he is and also he knows all the concomitant factors surrounding the plan of creation which may have a role to play in molding its course. So that also is taken into account. And as such, we observe that there is no flaw in natural laws. The proof lies in, lies in the study of nature as such. Many a great scientist has tried to find a flaw between some sets of laws and another set of laws and they fail to find any flaw. They are in complete accordance with each other. The laws of nature we are referring to are innumerable. It's impossible to count them or even to visualize how many they are. Because the more we study the laws of nature, more we discover underneath a world of which we had no knowledge previously. And it goes on, never to end. So the study of nature, whether it is from the known visible world to the invisible world which lies beneath, or it is across the cosmos to the visible world which lies beyond us. The same laws of uh, congruity uh, 